Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Devotions. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Brandon. I'm the vicar here at St. Paul, and I'm in this morning for Pastor Steve, who is on vacation. I hope you all had a great Christmas as we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus. And as we continue to walk through this Exodus narrative, uh, being reminded of how God rescued his people from slavery to Egypt. And that's what we remembered this Christmas season, that God sent his son Jesus to bring us back, to ransom us, to rescue us from the power of sin, death, and the devil. And so that's what we get to celebrate this time of year. And so as we celebrate this, as we continue on through this Christmas season, let's jump into this Exodus narrative and continue to follow along uh, with God's rescue of his people. And so we are continuing in chapter 33, starting at verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard these distressing words, they began to mourn and no one put on any ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, tell the Israelites, you are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you even for a moment, I might destroy you. Now take off your ornaments, and I will decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at Mount Horeb. And so we see just as God has rescued his people from slavery in Egypt, they're entangled in this new slavery, this slavery to sin. And we see that this holy God cannot be amongst sin. And yet our God does not leave us there. Our God did not leave these people, they are separated from him. The text continues in verse 7. Now Moses used to make, take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside of the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshiped, each at the entrance to his tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. And so we see that the people are separated from God because of their sin, because he is a holy God and they are a sinful people. And yet, he provides a way to be bridged to them through Moses. Moses acting as this go-between between God and the people, really pointing forward to what Jesus would do for us, that Jesus he became the sacrifice for our sins on the cross. He is the go-between, the mediator between God and man, that through Jesus, we who are sinful and far away from our Heavenly Father are brought near to him. We have access to God. That curtain in the temple has been torn, and we can be with God again. We have access to his throne of grace through Jesus. So we really see that being, being foreshadowed here by what Moses is doing. It continues in verse 12, Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people 
from all the other people on the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft on the rock, in the rock, and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand, and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. You see, again, we see this image of a God full of glory, this glory we can't fully embrace, this glory we can't behold in its extent. And yet, we see that God says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on who I will have compassion. And God has had mercy on you. He has had compassion on you. That is what he has done through the gift that we celebrate this Christmas, the gift of his son, Jesus. He has shown us mercy. He's shown us compassion. And because of that, we get the promise that we do get to be in the presence of God, that we get to live and reign with him for all of eternity. And so as you go about this day, as you go about continuing to celebrate this Christmas season, I pray that you'd be strengthened and comforted by the knowledge that our God, this glorious and holy other God, has brought us into the fold, that he's brought us into his kingdom through his son Jesus.